Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the press and the media. Uh, we've just concluded a highly successful 62nd meeting of the authority of the OECS. And um, I just want to advise the media that there were a number of critical issues considered and deliberated on by heads during this meeting. They included approval of a new structure and staffing of the OECS Commission. And let me say that this, the new structure that has been approved is in fact a less costly structure than what existed before, but takes into account the, the current challenges that we face both in the fiscal environment as well as um, challenges of development that now need to be addressed. The, we looked at the, also the question of financial sustainability of the Commission as well as the Pharmaceuticals Procurement Program of the OECS, which currently brings savings of approximately 30% on medicines um, procured by member states of the OECS. So the authority gave some very clear approvals and guidelines for the tightening up of the operations of that service so that it can be even more efficient and deliver better in the future. Of critical importance was an update on the status of application for membership by St. Martin and um, the situation with Guadeloupe and the, a program proposed by Martinique for its deeper integration into the OECS. Since the accession of Martinique to associate membership of the OECS, they've played a very dynamic role, um, very actively engaging all of the councils of ministers and um, they have now made a number of proposals with respect to ways in which Martinique can play, continue to play that dynamic role, but in a more structured manner. Um, we looked at issues relating to um, trade and the convening of the assembly of the OECS, which should be held soon in early in the new year. And finally, heads approved, gave their nod of approval to a proposed youth strategy for the OECS that is currently being shaped with the engagement of young people themselves across the OECS. And I would urge journalists to stay tuned on this one because it's going to be a very exciting and massive social media campaign to get young people in the OECS to crowdsource their own ideas of the things that they would like to see put in place for their own advancement. Thank you. I would just want to briefly commend the government and people of the government and people may have been under stress in their recovery efforts. It, the resilience of the people is one which we would want to see emulated elsewhere within the region. Again, equally, the leadership of the long-serving Prime Minister of Grenada has helped us through, in a very efficient way, what has been a very varied agenda list of items that touch on the practical lives of every citizen within the OECS. And so this, for me, has been very informative, very instructive as a new head, and I've learned much um, in terms of where we're at in the integration process, but more importantly, how St. Kitts and Nevis can play an even greater role in advancing some of the policy initiatives which we discuss and which we approve today. Thank you. Members of the press. Yes, yes. Members of the press, and of course, my colleague, Prime Minister, and the Director General. L let me say, as one who has been in the vineyard uh, or at, at this level for for quite a considerable time, um, this has been one of the 
the better meetings that I've had the opportunity to be part of. For, from a number of standpoints, first of all, let me say that I'm extremely happy to be back in Dominica at this time, and I, I believe that this meeting was held here primarily to, con to demonstrate and to reinforce the point of the camaraderie and the relationship and, the, and of course, the closeness of that, um, the OECS family. Knowing that Dominica was under stress, given the problems that you went through, but felt it was necessary to have to be here as heads to demonstrate that um, that understanding of the strong relationship among the, uh, our countries in the region. I want to add to the fact that I think we have um, the leadership of the OECS at this time. The Secretariat has been very. A very understanding of the financial situation of our states at this time, and uh, many initiatives was taken to have a number of critical issues discussed uh, in, in, a, in tangible ways without increasing serious costs. We use the technology, which has been one of the things we we are, we are trying to get all in all our countries to understand. The need to reduce the size of the bureaucracy and the reduce the size of, 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 of expenditure within the public service, wasting resources. A lot of people work when, when you should use the technology. We should be doing from country to country. We need to continue to do so. And I thought that what the Director General has done with the, some of the substantive discussion I have in presentation and video link. We did not minimize the, the, the extent of the results that we have got from those meetings. Um, it's a clear demonstration that we need to do a lot more in our individual countries in those areas. I think another major issue is the question of the, the attempt to come up with a uniform single health space. Because colleagues, that's so crucial for us. The number of issues that are confronting our region at this time that we are faced with and the only way we'd be able to confront and deal with this effectively, given the, the, given the tremendous amount of resources required to, to satisfy our health needs in the region, is for us to develop one uniform health space. And especially in the light of the fact that we have this freedom of movement issue, there's no way we'd be able to stop the spread of any serious problems in the region and health. Um, if we, in, if we do not have that uniform health policy and, 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 and health initiative. So I think that um, coming up with that policy and agreeing that we're going to unify our work in that area, it would also help to optimize the resources we have because we may be, we may be duplicating in, in many ways a lot of services and with the limited resources. Um, for example, the question of a dial dialysis um, um, a unit, it is very difficult for each country. I have the challenge in Grenada at this time. Very difficult for us to meet the dialysis needs of, 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 of the, the population at this time in Grenada. But maybe if we have one serious um, unit in one country and we all service it and pay towards that, the upkeep of that unit will have the best unit and that all our people who have the, the need for the service will get the, that optimal service. I, I also want to, to, to point out that we are living here. It was my, I was always concerned of the fact that next week many of us leave here to go to the Commonwealth meeting where, where there is a good possibility that one of our, our, our citizens in our region can emerge as Secretary General. And, and it was my feeling that we can, we can, in fact, increase that possibility if we send a message that we, unif we uh, unify our efforts among one, around one candidate. It was agreed among the heads that given that the two cap possible candidates at this time um, uh, OECS citizens, that um, the leadership of both of the countries involved will meet, and that we, by the time we leave here next week, we'll be going to the common meeting with one recommendation coming um, from the Caribbean region. 
We believe that is absolutely necessary because it makes no sense going there with two candidates, reducing the possibility and having ourselves eclipsed by because of the lack of unified effort um, and around a particular candidate. So I'm, I'm very heartened that when I say that we are leaving this meeting feeling happier, somebody expressed a while ago, Prime Minister, you're looking very happy. That was one of the reasons that I'm leaving happy because I noticed so many good things have occurred in this particular meeting. We also had a, a very good paper presented on a, on a water policy um, for the entire OECS. As you know, this is a challenging issue for the region as a whole. We agree to work together on ensuring that we can come up with such a uniform policy as far as water resources are concerned. And there are also the issue of we, we are aware, we are very much aware that our maritime space is far bigger than our land space and the tremendous possibilities and, uh, for our region, whether it's in the area of health, whether it's in the area of our economy, whether it's in the area of our fishing industry as a whole, food security. We need to have a serious, uniform maritime research strategy. And again, a, 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 what I consider to be a very informed paper was presented um, to us. And I think there were general understanding and agreement on the way forward as far as that is concerned. Uh, and finally, I don't want to say this. <coughs> The heads agreed that we had, a, I presented a short report on the initiative um, that the region had with respect to um, the way forward for West Indies cricket. I brought them up to date on the fact that I was being asked to lead that um, attempt to come up with a new governance structure for West Indies cricket initiated by heads in, of course, in consultation and relationship with the West Indies Cricket Board. We had such a meeting a few months ago in Grenada with all the stakeholders, including the West Indies Cricket Board, and many of our legends um, who have served us well, uh, were, they were part of that discussion, the business community, and, and all stakeholders. And we agree to come up with a, a distinguished group of Caribbean citizens who will look at the the structure of West Indies cricket, look at the reports that were presented before on the way forward for West Indies cricket, the Patterson report, the Wilkins report, and other reports. And, and we will ask them to come up with some recommendation on the way forward for West Indies cricket. After much consultation and discussions, it was agreed that we will accept and effect the decision of that of that distinguished panel of Caribbean citizens. The report has now been presented, and as heads, we are extremely busy with activities at our door every single minute and every hour of the day in our individual countries. But recognizing the value and importance of cricket and sports to the region as a whole and to our people, we've decided that we will sacrifice the, the, the time we did not even have to ensure that we can, in fact, um, and move forward, get the West Indies cricket back to a point where we can start going up the ladder once again. So it was a bit disheartening to, to hear the president of the West Indies Cricket Board indicating in a recent um, public statement, one, that the, the board of directors was so busy and they're professional people. I, I thought it was a very strange comment here you have regional leaders who are, in their own right, <laughs> successful professional, most, uh, most all of them are, and also extremely busy <laughs> in, their, in their own right with their responsibilities. And then the um, president of the board is saying that they, his board directors are too busy. I, I thought it's extremely pleased. And, and in addition, the Secretary General of CARICOM, with my, on my recommendation, wrote, the, the president indicating there was need for urgent, urgent, urgent meeting. Not necessarily, we weren't saying what we do with the report, you know. Let us meet to discuss the report. It was in the press yesterday. His letter to this from the Secretary General was placed in the press. 
but one has to guess who did it. And not only that, a reply saying that they were too busy and they could not meet with the, with the leaders and indicating that they will have a meeting in St. Lucia on the 12th of December and they're inviting us to come to that meeting. It is quite amazing the level of disrespect, the level of lack of understanding of the importance of this is quite frightening. And I don't think I should hold back any words. I expect the president of the Students Creative Board to respect the leadership of the Caribbean, the leadership of the people of the region, and to give effect to an urgent meeting. We expect no less. And I hope and pray what we saw was a rush of blood and not his real intention. So I expect to see a, a, um, a meeting very, very soon between the leadership and we are waiting for that answer to meet quickly to move cricket forward in the region. So friends, let me thank you all on behalf of the, all the leaders of the, re, of the OECS for um, what I consider to be an extremely important meeting. And I do want to say, the Minister of St. Kitts, he started us all on the right footing with um, what I consider one of the most informed and, and, um, and lifting presentation. And he challenged us on a number of critical issues, some of which we avoided before. But I think he being new, he's in a position to not be afraid to call a spade a spade. Maybe when he reach my stage, he might become a little less... Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's necessary, and I, I, I really thought that he, he started us off on a, on a right foot. But I do want to make the point to thank the Secretary, the Director General, on his, what I consider is in his leadership, and the staff who have supported him. And I'm proud to say that on my third stint as, as, as um, OECS Chairman, I, I consider this probably the best one. Thank you all. Oh yes, my yeah. friend, my friend from Martinique, who, who gave us a, really was a very strong participant in our meeting, and um, wanted to make a comment before we close. Colin? Yes, sorry. just to say how how much we appreciated our our work, our work welcoming, welcoming reception, and our work serious work in this session, in this summit. Um, we presented different sectors in which we are going to develop our cooperation so we can be integrated into the uh, OACS. I can mention some which are very important. Health is very important because um, in this domain, um, you cannot build a society where people are productive, unhappy, if you don't give health to the people. And in this region, if one country is sick, is ill, the next very soon will become, will become ill because the, the vi virus don't know about um, the frontier. They just cross over all the time. So we have to work together to um, give uh, good health to, to the population. And this is an, uh, an asset very important also for tourism because tourists don't come in places where you have uh, epidemies. Two, um, on the same uh, question of health, we have the question of um, uh, cancer, for example. New technologies are being developed on cancer and it is possible to detect very early the development of a cancer, and it is much easier to, to cure it at that time by using the technology of cyclotron. But this is very expensive, and we cannot do it alone. We cannot do it alone, and it is necessary to have a large market to do that. So Martinique is engaging in establishing a cyclotron, and Martinique counts a lot on on the rest of the Caribbean, the Eastern Caribbean, to participate in this endeavor, because it will not be uh, um, economical to do it 
for the population of Martinique alone. So we already set a company and we are opening this uh, company with uh, the possibility for other countries in the Caribbean to participate. Um, health is one. Clim climate change is one other sector which is very important. As you might know, uh, we already uh, organized a conference in Martinique in May where uh, uh, something like um, 20 head of state of the Caribbean participated and uh, where the president of France came and uh, we could prepare in Martinique uh, the, the alliance and the, the, the message that uh, the Caribbean has to um, pronounce, to, to, to claim in the conference in Paris in, uh, in, um, in November. Um, and we are, we are, our idea is to continue this work after the conference to, um, uh, to control the, the climate risk in the Caribbean. Training is very important, and I will not take, uh, extend myself on that. Um, transport, we cannot cooperate if we don't develop our transport system, maritime transport, air transport, and we already have some development in certain parts of the Caribbean, so we have to create the legislative conditions for this um, system of transport to, um, uh, to um, develop itself. And um, the, the maritime uh, question, the question of, of uh, uh, sea and ocean um, uh, development, which uh, people call now um, economy bleu, blue economy, we are very much engaged in that in Martinique, and we are hoping to, to participate and to share uh, our, what we already know on that matter, our scientific work, our technical work, and to do things together with the rest of the Caribbean because uh, the sea cannot be a frontier. On the contrary, the sea is a way to get in contact. So this is what we have to do in the next uh, years and, and, and decades coming. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, Mr. Prime Minister. Yeah. Um, can I ask a question now? Sure. Please? Sure. Go ahead. I'll just wait to move the mics uh, a little. Right. Yeah. Yes. I'm Curtis Matthew from DBS Radio, and uh, Mr. Prime Minister, we've been following developments. Really, election for the Secretary General of the Commonwealth. You you made the point that um, the two heads may have to meet to decide on the final candidate. Who will Grenada support for the position of Secretary General of the Commonwealth? Oh, Grenada, Grenada's position has been well known for months. Uh, we have we declared our support for for um, for Ronald Sanders a long time ago. And why is why is that so? Um, as opposed to the other candidate? No, well, I'm, I won't want to spend time on this because Dominica does have a. Uh, candidate and the prime minister is, is, is going to be discussing with his, co his colleague in, in Antigua. And that's why when we leave here, we'll have one candidate. And whoever that candidate is, Grenada will be supporting. Thank you, sir. Anything else? Why, why the silence, if you will, on my, my name, Matt Peltier, on naming the candidate as we speak? No, well, I think we, we, we agree on the process for naming the candidate. Mm -hmm. If we had the candidate finalized right now, we would tell you. But we've said that there are two candidates right now, and the leaders of the two con um, from countries from which the two candidates come from will, in fact, be meeting soon. So there was no and by discussion, the time we sir, leave... There was no discussion on who that candidate should be. I'm sure they would have started discussion. But I'm telling you, by the time we leave here next week, we will be going in Malta with one candidate. The whole region will be supporting one candidate. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think it's important for us to um, recognize that it's open to any member of the 53 member states of the Commonwealth to field a candidate. In fact, there are three candidates 
now um, up for the position of Commonwealth Secretary General. And um, there is still an opportunity for other members of the Commonwealth to also um, put forward a candidate. Um, we are in a situation where we have two candidates now from the Caribbean region. And um, it is important going forward to consider uh, which of the candidates are likely to be able to command the majority votes within the Commonwealth. Um, what has been decided is that the two countries from the, from the Caribbean who have candidates will uh, discuss the matter to see whether um, uh, we can arrive um, at a, um, an agreement moving forward. However, um, the, it's, it's something that has to be discussed. You have to look at all the, the, um, uh, the pros and cons and, uh, and, and, and um, take into account all the, um, all the different factors. And, um, and then we will see going forward whether there can, in fact, be um, uh, a consensus from the Caribbean. Um, but, of course, as we indicated, there, it's open to any member of the Commonwealth to field a candidate um, for the position. Your mic, your mic. One. Idona John Baptist, Marpin News. Uh, given the recent terrorist attacks, Dr. Mitchell, does OECS heads consider that there is any growing threat uh, to the Caribbean regarding these um, recent terrorist attacks? I think what, it, what we see happening is an, it's a, something that every single nation around the world must, must take notice. And of course, it's uh, when your neighbor house is on fire, you have to watch us. So clearly, we have to, we are our ministers of security and uh, um, I certainly will be working and have been working closely together to confront any possible problems we may, we may have. Hopefully, we'll continue to remain the zone of peace in the world community. Um, and we certainly would have to take every step possible to ensure that we do not have those occurrences. But we, said we did issue very in the opening ceremony very strong sympathy and support to our brothers and sisters in France um, on, on what has occurred um, in, in France at this particular time. Has any uh, concrete discussions uh, been held with this regard? We didn't have, that was not an item mm -hmm. on the agenda, but there were discussion on the fringe of, of our meeting. Uh, another question, if Matt Pelty again, and um, this time to Mr. Timothy Harris, and I suspect you may want to jump in as well because I heard you comment. The issue of Liat, a very serious one for the Caribbean region. Clearly, both you and Mr. Harris uh, have spoke to the issue. Was any concrete decisions taken on a way forward to deal with this Liat issue in the Caribbean? Transport issue. Well, Liat issue would require a broader forum than the OECS. Certainly, it would involve the, the stakeholders, all of whom are not part of the OECS framework, and certainly that would, a dis that would be a discussion we would want to have an input even at the CARICOM level. I think what we have done was to signal where our citizens and residents are vis-a-vis -vis the continuing inability of LEA to show the kinds of improvements that we, we would like to see. And the major challenge to the integration process of having an unreliable air transport available to us, and yes, deficiency, even in relation to transportation by sea on cargo, etc. So what we have done is to signal we have two stakeholder governments at least, maybe three, within the OECS. There are other um, stakeholder governments beyond 
and we are hoping that at some point in time, through the discussions that are taking place both within the OECS, within CARICOM and perhaps wider field, we could certainly move the agenda towards some satisfactory arrangements. But it appears, though, that this issue has been on the table for uh, a number of years, decades. Are we really serious as a region to deal with this uh, travel issues uh, that we're having with uh, this regional airline? I think it remains on the agenda because we are serious. And many of the discussions we are having, we are not going to get the responses and solutions to them over time. Well, overnight, certainly you have to engage in, in careful considerations of many of the challenges. We have been talking, for example, the talk of integration for a very long time. And that is a talk that must continue as things evolve themselves. So I don't want the length of time to be taken as diminishing of an interest in this particular topic. In fact, it says that the issue continues to be alive. We have not been able to find the appropriate solution but to continue in conversations, like with all big and difficult issues, we certainly hope to get there. I'm just going to ask one final question on this very subject. The issue of taxation for the airline. I know one minister touched on it briefly. Can we just harmonize this like yesterday? I mean, this is one issue that you can deal with almost immediately among the OECS leaders. I believe that, again, taking the cue from what was said in the opening statement, that we are open to do all that we reasonably can do to give confidence to the people within the region and beyond the region in the reliability of air transportation to and from our destinations. And so we haven't taken that off. The, the table as an idea, it's somewhat something which of course has to be studied within our various jurisdictions. Um, an argument has been made about reducing that and, and what that can do to the totality of revenues, etc. But it is an issue which requires consideration. And so I, I did not envisage that during this meeting we'd have had enough information with which to make and inform discussions. Hence, we will have to continue this conversation. It, it, it's a, it's a, in addition, let's face it, the question of taxation is not just about the OECS. You have other countries in the region which they are traveling the cost of tickets so based on the taxes at every jurisdiction. So, so it has to be a regional issue. Um, a car commission, you, not just an OECS one. So even if we reduce ours in the OECS and the taxes remain high in Barbados, Trinidad, or whatever kind of countries, we still have a problem. So it has to be a uniform thing. Les Roy Williams, uh, Government Information Service in St. Kitts. Uh, I had hoped that on the agenda, and I know you can't have everything on an agenda for, for two days, Ectel, the regulatory body of the telecom sector and the OECS, some of the challenges that Ectel presently faces with the merger between cable and wireless and Columbus communications to form flow. Um, it is said that there will be some impact, that prices will increase, especially for broadband services and so on. How does the OECS through Ectel, plan to deal with this matter? Well, in fact, DG can wish to comment if he wishes, but uh, i just say this. We did have, in fact, very extensive discussion on that very, very important issue. The chairman of Ectel, the attorney general of St. Kitts was here, and he presented uh, um, some, some views on, on the issue. And of course, we decided on a way forward and going forward to this. I don't know if the DG wants to make any specific comments. Just, just to add, Chairman, that um, one of the decisions was that the heads would be kept more informed in real time of developments in that sector because it is very critical to our economic possibilities and potential. And that um, the, st the strengthening of Ectel in terms of its monitoring 
and its regulatory capacity is a matter of the greatest urgency. Does, colleagues, thank you very much. Um, I think we've spent much longer than we intended to. And we, we thank you for your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>